Before we lived in this country called Canada, we were under British rule. But what event helped establish Canada as an independent nation? World War I, and especially the Second Battle of Ypres. But just who was a part of this battle, and how did it play out? In this video, I'll be telling you the story of the significance of one of the lieutenant generals during World War I, and a specific artifact. Edwin Alfred Hervey Alderson was born on April 8, 1859, in Capel St. Mary. By the age of 55, Alderson had already been a part of five battles, and due to his prior experience with Canadians in other battles, he was promoted to lead the Canadian Expeditionary Force during the Great War. But why would he do this, and how would he be able to navigate in the terrible weather and unknown terrain of the First World War? In 1915, the Canadian division sailed over to France, then soon moved into the Belgian town of Ypres. Alderson was commanding the Canadian division at this time, and people like him would have to know where enemy trenches are, and in this case, a map of Ypres would help greatly. In April, the Canadian division had a short taste of trench life and was ordered into the Ypres salient. This was the first major involvement that the Canadians had in World War I, and Alderson was commanding it. The salient was dangerous for the Allies, but Alderson and the Canadians were eager to do their country proud. On April 22nd, an unexpected event happened from the Germans. Chemical weapons had been outlawed by international treaties, but the Germans wanted to try out a new weapon, chlorine gas. Thousands of soldiers died from this mysterious yellow cloud, burning their thrones and causing their lungs to fill with mucus. Alderson had to adapt and figure out what to do to defend this German offensive. For Alderson to successfully plan a counterattack, locations of the terrain would be crucial. Alderson, being lieutenant general, would possibly use a map like this to plan out where he would lead his soldiers. Since so many soldiers died from the first chlorine gas attack, there was a large gap in the trenches that needed to be filled, so during the hours of desperate fighting, Alderson sent what reserves he controlled to close the gap, stopping the Germans from encircling the Canadian division inside the salient. For Alderson, the battle was a loss, but for the rest of the Canadian division, it had been victorious. The Canadians were praised for their courage and bravery, but Alderson fell out of touch with the action, finding himself commanding 33 battalions at once. However, the price was paid, and over 6,000 casualties being Canadian. This battle was deeply felt to the point where Lieutenant Colonel John McRae wrote the famous poem, In Flanders Fields, that continues to resonate today. It goes without saying that this map, and maps like it, had a significant role in World War I, and Alderson was a key character as well. The map would have helped Alderson and people like him figure out the best spot for allies to be, and since this map shows both British and German trenches, it can be used to his advantage in possibly locating where he can attack from and where the Germans might as well. His efforts in the Second Battle of Ypres played a crucial role in the outcome of World War I as a whole. He was lucky enough to come out of the Great War alive and live the rest of his life with his wife Alice, eventually passing away on December 14, 1927. But many soldiers under the command of him didn't. The Second Battle of Ypres was the point where Canadians defined themselves and proved they can be their own instead of being with the British. Although we live in a peaceful Canada today, the price was paid over a hundred years ago. So next time you hear the poem In Flanders Fields, just remember the sacrifices made by Sir Edwin Alfred Alderson and the Canadian Division. As we know, maps have a significant role in the Great War. However, the map itself symbolizes much more than a piece of paper. The Second Battle of Ypres was a turning point for Canadians, and this map tells the story of how Canadians identified themselves. Prior to this battle, Canadians were just any other people, but because of their dedication and bravery, they proved a name for themselves and helped form the Canada you live in today.